Okay. So let me introduce to you uh, two green offices uh, and the students behind them um, who have been working on circular economy projects uh, within their university. And today we welcome Mathilde um, from the Green Office for K11, who has been working as ATX manager for the repair hub um, at uh, yeah, this uh, university and this green office in Belgium. And um, after Matilda's presentation, we will uh, hear more about the Cot Zero Deschet project uh, brought to you by the office at the University of Liège, and that will be presented by Judith and Jennifer. So Matilda, take it away. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Matilda. I'm a student um, of engineering technology, electromechanic engineering uh, in K11. And last semester, I was project management of uh, circular economy work group in the Green Office Kaya Leuve. Uh, and our biggest project in that work group is the Repair Hub. Um, the Repair Hub is a physical place, a location in Leuve, which has like, a, it's a big hangar um, with a lot of tools, a lot of space, um, where the Green Office organizes workshops um, around uh, a circular economy. Uh, and it just, it's really cozy, it's really nice. Um, the repair hub mainly in the repair hub we mainly work around three events which are workshops uh repair cafes and the library of things all of these events were kind of hard to organize uh the last year though so uh, at the end of the presentation i will talk to you about what we did instead this year to promote circular economy but first um let me show you what we normally do uh, and how it up. So, um, first I'll talk a bit about the workshops we organize. Um, we have some different types of workshops. First, we have the workshops in which we upcycle old stuff. Like on the left picture, you can see a little a cute Christmas decoration we made from an uh, old light bulb. Um, but we also upcycle, for example, old bike stuff um, in animal head. Uh, in animal huts, like you see in the middle pictures. And then we have, uh, we also had a DIY cosmetic uh, workshop, which mainly focuses on like a zero waste living. Um, and that was a really uh, popular workshop. So I think in the next couple of years, hopefully we'll do some more of those. Uh, then we also have the library of things, which is also a very popular um, a thing in K11 um, and it allows students to rent screwdriver, toolboxes, sewing machines, all that kind of stuff um, just for free. Um, when I say like rent, it kind of means like we, we have this system where students can uh, fill in, um, in what, what they want to rent, then they come during the opening hours um, to get the stuff and they can take it home with them or they can repair their stuff there in the repair hub as well. Uh, for example, our sewing machines and some of the toolboxes are like really big, really good quality. Uh, so we don't want them to take it home um, with them. Uh, I see there's questions, but I'll uh, come back to them at the end of the presentation, if that's okay. Uh, so yeah, that's a library of things. Then or last, last kind of events we organize are the repair cafes, um, which are just really cozy, fun events that's um, often in the evening where students can come uh, to the re repair hub, uh, bring, some, bring their stuff with them and then fix it uh, themselves there with the help of some of peers or even some professionals that come there as volunteers um, to help. Uh, for example, on the left picture you can see uh, there was like a workshop combined with a repair cafe on how to fix old clothes. And then it was a staff member from the K11 who came there voluntarily. Uh, she knew how to um, sew very well and she helped uh, to fix clothes. Then we also have in the middle picture, or in the right picture, we have some uh, electricians who helped with uh, computers, uh, mixers and everything. Um, so it's, it's a fun activity. The, often the professionals show you how to fix it. Um, so you learn yourself as well um, while your stuff gets fixed. But then, as I said this year, we couldn't do 
too much of those stuff anymore as student led activities had to be cancelled. Uh, so we came up with some other alternatives. Um, we started off with a DIY laptop stand competition, as everyone is on their laptop um, a lot of the time of the day uh, right now. Um, we wanted, and like laptop stands are getting really popular. Um, we had a volunteer who came up with the idea of having a laptop stand competition. She basically like, um, she filmed a video of herself making a laptop stand out, out of cardboard she found out of the house and one out of Legos. Uh, and then uh, we invited students to do the same thing. And there was, of course, a nice prize to be uh, win. And then we also had a campaign for, um, on the one hand, we had a campaign for uh, like to promote reusable masks. And then we also had a campaign for proper mask disposal. Because um, both of the really overlooked um, a proper mass disposal. Uh, and then at the end of the semester, last semester, we had a second hand fair together with ASN Leuven. ASN is like, uh, you probably all know it, it's a, a Erasmus student association. Uh, and so the we had two events mean, uh, for that second hand fair. We had on the one hand, side, we had the outgoing Erasmus students who came and brought stuff. They donated stuff that they didn't need, like kitchen utensils, pots, pans. Um, we had a lot of clothes. We even had a mixer, a TV, all those things. And then um, when the incoming Erasmus students came, uh, we sold everything and all the income we donated to a local charity. Um, it was really nice. It was really, there was a lot of people who came. So that was, it was nice to see also. It was an event that was not online. Um, so it was nice for a change. Oh, these are some visuals from our campaign around uh, masks. They were made by a green office um, uh, volunteer as well. So really nice. Um, a bit about the environmental and social impacts on uh, the wrong disposal of single-use masks. So yeah, that was a little bit about the repair hub. Um, I see uh, Nick has a question. Uh, can you, you want to type it or? No, it, I can also I can also just unmute. Um, hi, it looks very cute. And we also have a Go Green office here in Eindhoven and I'm always amazed by their initiative. It's really fun. Um, I had a question on the library of things. Do you own all of the, all of the things that you have or do you um, make them rent between people? Uh, you mean, do we, okay, yeah. So no, we, ha uh, we own everything. Um, so uh, it's, well, it's owned by a cave Leuven um, and they kind of donated everything. Uh, they give us like, they give us uh, some money in the beginning of the year to spend on the renewing of the tools. Uh, so yeah, we, we own everything. But actually that's a, it's a cool idea to like um, rent out stuff from other people or I guess have an initiative like that. Uh, if anyone has other questions, you can also type in the chat, I guess. Um, and in the meantime, I think I can, I have some questions for you. Um, just like some stuff to think about, to uh, discuss. And my first question is, um, do you often repair things yourself or you go to a professional or you just throw it away and buy something new? Yeah, some discussion about that. Uh, just type something in. I don't see who is typing, so. <laughs> I go to my dad, yeah. <laughs> Same. <laughs> or, or my grandma for fixing clothes. <laughs> I love to try and fix stuff by myself and also come to my dad and try to fix it in his garage. And then he's like, no, you're going to hurt yourself. So <laughs> it was a nice try. Yeah. Um, I try to refer it myself first. And if I can't, I'll ask others to help me, yeah? <laughs> That's fiction, my God. Actually, we have a really cool initiative also um, in the same building as the Repair Hub, and it's an initiative from K. Leuven, and they have this huge bike atelier, um, it's called, uh, where you can come as a student with your bike, and there's always it's always open every day from 10 to 5, and you can just come, and they fix it for free. They help, well, they actually help you fix it. Um, you can also use all of their tools, um, and if 
bikes get donated, they reuse, they've tried to reuse all of the parts of the bike that's donated to your bike. So it's really like you only buy this, you only pay for the things you buy from them and you don't have to pay like their working hours. I fixed my clothes, but it always looks quite bad. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice. You have the same thing in Heidelberg. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, then I have another question. Uh, do you have a similar project like the repair hub in your city or university? Um, or do you think you would need it? Wait, I don't see anyone typing. Or like, oh. the student council or sometimes organize workshops for fixing. That's cool. Yeah. Also, you have it in Antwerpen, but not from not on the university. So it's like in the city, not owned by the university. Nope, but it would definitely be amazing to have enough people willing to act on it. Yeah, maybe you could start one. <laughs> we don't have it, but I would be so helpful if we did. Yeah, um, so that's great. So it looks like everyone likes the initiative. We have a clothing fair one in which people could swap old clothes. Yeah, that's cool. And there's a swap store where people could uh, help fixing stuff, but not regularly. Okay, so like, I see there's a lot of similar initiatives, maybe not exactly the same, but looks like, looks like uh, it's going well. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe you did, or, and, uh, or the next group can start presenting. Sure. Um, thank you, Matilde, for the uh, presentation. And thank you all for posting so many common chats. Um, Judith or Jennifer? Yes, here we go. Um, so please go ahead. Yeah, so I'm going to start the presentation. Yeah, so um, uh, what we are going to present today for the University of Liège, the Green Office, we have uh, five projects uh, led by students, so we are going to to present one of them, which is called Zero Déchet dans mon Cote, which means Zero Waste in My Cote. A cote in Belgium is a uh, student housing. So our plan is to help uh, students reduce their waste and uh, recycle more in their homes, uh, in the university and etc. Okay, so uh, we have uh, five projects the, that I already mentioned that you can see on this slide. They all follow the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals guidelines and they focus especially on the 12th, which is the responsible production of cost and consumption. In order to, um, to, uh, to help students uh, um, uh, do things uh, to improve their, their lifestyle, etc. We uh, also collaborated with Alaya for um, a challenge project in which every week a new challenge was, um, was offered to students so that they could uh, try and do uh, things like, for example, uh, spend less time on the, uh, in the shower or something like that. And uh, after, uh, after each challenge, there would be um, a drawer for students to get a, a gift uh, if if they were uh, if they were drawn in the giveaway. So the five projects are the local food network, which work to help students uh, get sustainable and healthy food. So in collaboration, for example, with uh, shops around the city and the uh, and the food uh, food packs in the university, the waste in Macau, so which is our project which we will present. A sustainable welcome pack, which uh, has been actually uh, taken by uh, our team uh, to uh, to do for the next year. So at the beginning of the year, we want to uh, present uh, a pack which will help uh, students measure and compensate for their carbon footprints and uh, raise awareness about sustainable consumption, along with a few gifts to help uh, people start off. For example, some uh, coupons for uh, for shops and everything. The fourth project is Water for All, which wants to uh, help students access 
quality water, especially in the university through uh, water fountains. Uh, and the, the last one is Jason to Life, which uh, concentrates on circular economy on the recycling of electronic hardware. So a JSM is a is a, a form in Belgium. Uh, they also collaborate with the reforesting program. So Yeah, so now I'm going to let uh, Jennifer present uh, the, uh, the, the project. Yes, so our project is named Zero Waste Makeup, as uh, just said. Uh, our aim is to raise awareness among university students about their daily waste production, but sometimes we try to... Oh, what's happening? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but we, we project to, to go further than just in brackets uh, the zero waste philosophy, and we think to, to and we try to think about how we could uh, buy food better. Like why why not have more organic, local, or plant based meal, for example. And uh, our second aim is to help students to find ways to reduce their waste product. Um, waste uh, production. Um, what about our members? So we are eight from uh, various backgrounds. Uh, for example, one of the students comes from uh, politics uh, faculty, another from uh, literature, economics, ecology, etc., etc. And uh, we, we are all motivated in, in this. Um, what about our collaboration with other students' groups? Uh, we like to work uh, with other groups than just ourselves because we think it's important to make links uh, between uh, other Green Office of the Edge project or teams or another other students' group. For example, the veterinary faculty student group, uh, the Gemblue Agrobiotech faculty, which is located near from Liège, and uh, with the FIDE, which is uh, the official students' federation at the U Liège. Okay, so now I'm going to present what we did already in the last semester because all, uh, all Green Office was uh, first started in, in, the, the, uh, in the beginning of 2020, so it's very recent. And uh, our team uh, was all new at the beginning of the school year, so we uh, started uh, really working in the last semester. So we had only one big project in the first semester because with uh, coronavirus regulation, we couldn't do workshops uh, like we wanted to do initially. So uh, our project was the zero waste pack. It was uh, it was made after a survey uh, among the students, uh, which we had a few hundred answers to. And uh, through two social media contests, twenty packs were offered to students in in the giveaways uh, at the occasion of Saint Nicola and Christmas, uh, especially through an advent calendar uh, that was um, organized by uh, the communication team of the Green Office. So it was composed of homemade projects, which I which I will present uh, in the next slide. And uh, there was also a receipts booklet with the recipes of the products to help students make themselves the the, the product they found in the, the pack. Um, we also try to still raise awareness via information, etc. Et uh, uh, for example, we made a local sustainable company and shop list, as well as do it yourself information uh, through, for example, the recipes booklet I already mentioned. So, Yeah, so the pack was uh, made with six uh, products, which we all made, which the team all made. Uh, so there was solid shampoo, deodorant, or purpose cream, solid to toothpaste, dish soap, and beer. So um, all of them were made so by the team members, and uh, we we tried to uh, to use the less. Um, the, the the more um, sustainable the most sustainable um, uh, products possible as well as uh, as as um, as a um, pots and everything. Um, so, uh, for example, we use the plastic for some of the um, recipients, but uh, they are all uh, recycled plastics, and uh, we made sure that they could be used uh, 
over and over again and they were of good quality so that they won't be uh, thrown away after two, two times. The, the, the pack also contained a reusable water bottle that you can see uh, in there and the tote bag which were um, provided by the university. What you can see in the, in the water bottle is the dish soap actually. So now I'm going to let uh, Jennifer present what we are planning next um, during this semester on the next. Yes, so uh, for the second part of the year, we want to collect plastic, uh, plastic and yash caps uh, in collaboration with an association for disabled workers, uh, which is located uh, south, southwest uh, of Brussels. And uh, we want to make a video to, to show um, what's the journey of a, a plastic and or EH cap uh, from, it, um, from its construction to, to its use and to its uh, to being, being uh, thrown away. Um, second project is uh, because of the corona crisis, uh, we couldn't make workshops to show how we we, um, we made the, pro uh, the products uh, that presented to you uh, this, uh, before. Uh, so we will make some uh, DIY tutorials uh, via Facebook um, lives um, to make interaction with the students and to answer to their question in direct. And we will make it in March if all is okay. Uh, another project is uh, the welcome pack uh, for um, uh, the back to school period of uh, 2021 to 2022, and in collaboration with uh, today, so the, the official student federation. And uh, the idea is to make up an eco-friendly pack uh, in collaboration with them uh, to empower students uh, in their um, sustainable habits. Um, another project is uh, an interactive map in collaboration with another team of the Green Office of Liège, uh, which is called a Local Food Network Team. And we want to, to make a map, so an interactive map, uh, after, um, after making some shopkeepers' interviews uh, to, build, uh, to build the map, which will facilitate students' uh, organization to have more um, sustainable habits and so they, they they will see the schedules of the shops, uh, the, um, the products they they will offer, and um, and what the, the zero waste uh, benefit to go there, um, etc. And our uh, final project is to further raising awareness via social network uh, with our Instagram or Facebook uh, networks, um, so you can follow us if you want. And uh, finally, uh, we just wanted to say that even if uh, we've been working for just one year until now, we have uh, already um, a good team and a good organization. And this experience to be in and work and be in a green office is very interesting because we are still evolving and we get informed to subjects. Uh, we have to, we, we can communicate uh, even if it's not like the normal way to communicate, but it's, it's still, an, an, um, still uh, interesting to have contacts with other students. And so thank you for, for uh, listening to us. Okay, so does anyone have any question? If, if now we have a few questions for you, or if you want to, to answer. Okay, so first, uh, do you already have uh, some things you do to try to reduce waste in your, in your house or your, or your flat or something? Yes, go on. Hello, uh, 
yeah, I wanted to say that I try not to uh, buy uh, too many kitchen, um, uh, not appliances, but for example, bowls. <laughs> Uh, for example, I would use things uh, in which food came in, for example, solid plastic packaging that can be reused and use those things to uh, make whatever I need, anything that can be used a couple of few more times, not to throw that many plastics away, for example. Okay, okay, so there are the soap or shampoo bars, yeah, we do that too. Yeah, shopping in bulk is a uh, is great from the uh, yeah with this consumption. Um, saving food, yeah, we we personally I try to also do that. So um, the garbage collectors, yeah, the, that we uh, I don't know in our, in newer countries do you have a lot of uh, garbage collectors for different kind of weights because I know for example that uh, in France they don't have that uh, that much. Uh, like in, we do in Belgium? Neither in Croatia. It's also um, in a very center of the cities where they have those, but most of the country is not uh, that much okay. of that going on, unfortunately. Okay, the metal stores too, yeah. Oh, that's, that's nice for the, the sustainability challenge, yeah. Yeah, we we wanted to try something with uh, old clothes, but we didn't have time yet to try and plan something about that. Yeah, swapping is a good idea too. Also, uh, another question we had is, uh, for example, do you know uh, between um, between uh, plastic, uh, paper, or or uh, uh, fabric bag? Do you know which one? Uh, are the uh, consume the most uh, when they are produced uh, pollute the most when they are produced? Yeah, the the rotten coconut milk uh, is also very easy to do ourselves. Okay, so um, yes, I will repeat the question then. Um, so uh, what I wanted to ask is, when they are, they are produced, do you know what kind of bag uh, pollutes the most? So uh, if you have a plastic, a paper, or a fabric bag, do you know which one, a, a fabric, a tissue bag? Uh, yeah, fabric, so uh, they, they all pollute where well, they are produced, but do you know which one? Uh, produce the most and the less. If you still don't get it, I will maybe try to. Uh, yes, yes, because it's like uh, the carbon carbon print. Yeah. So yeah, cotton. Yeah, I was. So I see uh, Anna says that uh, they want when they are only use one. This the cotton ones, and uh, so yeah, actually the plastic ones are the one which produce the less at production. But uh, there, there's the thing about uh, about uh, reutilization. So if you want to reuse something, I think uh, we had a conference last last uh, semester, and I think uh, you had to use. Uh, uh, fabric bag or cotton bag uh, about 200 times so that it would be um, so, so that uh, it would be run to buy um, so that um, there the, it would be used enough to compensate for the for the pollu pollution at the production uh, so but of course there's also the the recycling uh, part afterwards because because plastic bags are way less easily uh, recyclable. Okay. Does anyone have any other question? Yes, actually, uh, when I said uh, the total bag uh, earlier, uh, we offered uh, one, but it was uh, some that, that were leftovers from the beginning of the year, so from the welcome packs at the beginning of the year. So we tried to, 
to give them to people personally. I, we, ha we have a lot of bags of cotton bags in our apartment, but we use them a lot. So it's pretty practical <laughs> to go when we go to buy groceries or, or something. I got a, a little question for, um, for people. Um, do, you, do you prefer to buy something because it's your waste, because it's local, or uh, because it's eco friendly? You think there is a hierarchy between these three? Um, Characteristics. Yeah, so I see uh, someone say that you put return of all the rates. Yeah, we have some shops in Belgium also in the Indians which uh, do that too. Yeah, actually, when it's local, it's more, it's already more eco friendly because you don't have as much uh, transport and everything. Yeah, I see everyone votes for local. <laughs> So if, uh, oh yeah, so we try to buy in, like we, there are a lot of shops, uh, sustainable shops in here, so personally, I try to buy uh, a lot more local, and uh, so I also put local over eco-friendly, but usually I try to find both uh, at the same time, and yeah, uh, seasoned season vegetables are also good to to buy. I think I'm not so different uh, from Judith's habits, so I respond the same local. I think that uh, consuming locally is very important. Uh, as, um, said that? as Nick said, uh, we, we have to, to be aware that some local or eco-friendly products are misleading, so we have to, to be warned about greenwashing and all the steps, so. Yeah, yeah, I see that, uh, yeah, the, the, the price of the uh, eco-friendly products is also a problem. Also, um, we here in Belgium, I we talked uh, to some shopkeepers for the, um, for the interactive map project, and uh, some said that uh, they, they have, to, they, they sell, pretty loud because a lot of um, of farmers and everything they produce that they sell their uh, their products very well for a very low price already so they already live under the poverty uh, the poverty line so it's it's uh, pretty difficult for them to yeah 